and then present your case. Subhanallah. In other words, that surah also tells us arrogance, or, or this arrogance of not seeking refuge. When will that happen? When someone's iman in the final day is weak. This surah delivers punishments in the next life with the word falaq. Against the arrogant who do what? Sorcery and jealousy. Sorcery and deceit, they refuse to seek refuge. May Allah make us of those who truly genuinely enter the refuge and seek it sincerely. Then the word sharr. So we have قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ we, we begin, say, I seek refuge in the master of Al-Falaq. By the way, قُلْ referring directly to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa but by extension all of us. It's a remedy for him and through him it becomes a remedy for all of us. So the word sharr. You know, there are three words in Arabic in the Qur'an that are used for bad. Bad. There's the word sharr, there's the verbal form bi'sa, bi'sa, and there's the word sa'a. And there are variations of each. So sayyi'a comes from sa'a, and you know, bi'sa usually used as a, in sentence form, and then of course sharr. But what's the difference between them? First of all, from a vocabulary point of view, they have different antonyms. Sharr is the opposite of khayr. Sharr is the opposite of khayr. And I'll define that one in detail last. Let's talk a little bit about bi'sa. Bi'sa is actually when you, you feel something is deplorable and detestable and terrible, then you'll call it bi'sa. For example, you drink something, you say, oh my God, it's a terrible drink. Bi'sa sharab. That would be bi'sa sharab. But if you drink something, you say, wow, this is awesome, you'll say ni'ma sharab. So the opposite of bi'sa is ni'ma. Ni'ma. And it's used as an expression of either being extremely impressed with something, ni'ma, or extremely disgusted by something with bi'sa. That leaves the word sa'a. Sa'a. And the word sa'a refers to something not just being evil, but ugly. Ugly. And its opposite is hasuna. Sa'at masira. Hasuna ulaika rafiqa. Sa'a actually means deformed, you know, uh, disfigured, hideous. So the actions that are hideous and ugly in and of themselves are called sayyi'at. The action itself is ugly. It's not even beautiful of an act. You know, a sayyi'ah for example can be, um, you know, you're, you're uh, uh, doing ghiba. It's an ugly act. It's just ugly through and through. It's hideous. It's an ugly thing to do. So it's called a sayyah. But now let's turn to the word sharr. Sharr is something that is universally and unanimously understood as harmful or evil. Specifically, sharr makes reference to that which will cause someone harm. Sharr, that which will cause someone harm. Sharara in Arabic is the spark of a flame that can burn you. Like it can come out of a fire. Like you know those little sparks come out sometimes and they can land on your skin and burn you. That's sharara. Literally shar, that which causes somebody harm. Now, the ayah is profound in declaring min sharri ma khalaq. You're seeking refuge of the master of al-falaq, the lord of al-falaq, from what? From the evil, shar, and the word shar will come several times, but the first shar, ma khalaqa. The shar of what he created. The shar of what he created. Now there are several rhetorical lessons here. The first of them. He didn't say min sharri al-makhluq. مِنْ شَرِّ كُلِّ مَخْلُوق from the, from the, you know, I seek refuge from the evil of all creation, or everything that's been created. He said, مَا خَلَقَ What He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, created. Why is that important? Because whatever harm the creation can cause you, know that the one who created it has more power. He can save you from that harm. Because He's the one in the end who created it. So His reference... Him getting credit for the, being the creator gives him power over whatever harm the creation may be able to cause. The second is shar is not attributed to Allah. Shar is attributed to khalq. And ulama talk about this in depth and it becomes a philosophical issue, but I'll give you the gist of it. People keep it really simple. The bottom line in Islamic studies when it comes to the concept of shar is that evil is not actually an entity in and of itself. It is only considered the lack of good. Just like darkness, you know the imagery of Tawheed and Shirk, darkness and light? Darkness actually doesn't exist. What actually exists? Light. When you don't have light, what do you have? Darkness. So darkness in and of itself isn't an actual entity. It's, it's goodness that's the entity. And a lack of goodness is what's, what darkness is. So evil in the end is what? A lack of good. But this ayah has profound lessons in it because Allah left the language open and universal. Min sharri ma khalaq, He didn't reduce it to shayateen. The evil in the next surah is sharri al-waswas al a very specific creation. But when you say ma khalaq, whatever he created, from the harm of whatever he created, we learn from this that there is no creation on the face of this earth. 
No creation on the face of the, that doesn't come without a flaw. The only one free of flaw is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else will have something missing. Something will be missing. Some element of shar is possible from everything. Think of the most amazing creations of Allah like the sun. So many benefits from the sun. Are there harms on the sun too? So many benefits from water. Is there harm in water also? So many benefits in the earth. Are there harms in the earth too? So many benefits of the sky. Are there harms that come from the sky also? Everything Allah has created has an element. It can have harm in it. It can have harm in it. So we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from the potential harmful elements of everything. Things that are not, that are beyond our perception. You know, a car, very beneficial. Can it be harmful? Can you die in an accident? Can you get in, you know, can you put yourself in great difficulty? Yeah, it's possible. So all creations have that element of harm, potential harm in them. And so we ask Allah Azza wa Jal His protection from all of them. Min sharri ma khalaq. Now, it's getting more specific. We, I mentioned this before in the beginning of the surah. We're going from general to more specific. So the next specific area of evil or harm. Min sharri ghasiqin. Ghasaq. In Arabic literature, ghasaq is considered awwalul layl. The first part of the night. In other words, when the blue of the sky is gone and it's all black now. That's ghasaq. Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ Right? The setting of the sun, that's one time. Then it gets deep into the night, that's ghasaqi layl. Now, the word ghasiq also, it's used in literature for that which sinks, or that which disappears. In that sense, in Arabic literature, we, we find the word ghasiq being used for the sun and even for the moon. In a hadith actually, the Prophet used it for the moon. In Arabic literature, you find for example, يَعُودُ إِلَى الْبَيْتِ مَعَ الْغَسَقِ Which means, أَيْ مَعَ بِدَايَةِ ظُلْمَةِ اللَّيْلِ He went home at the time of ghasaq, which means when, the, when it started really getting dark. ghasaq al-qamar When the, you know when there's a lunar eclipse? It's called ghasaq al-qamar أَظْلَمَ سَاعَةُ الْخُصُوفِ غَسَقَتْ عَيْنُهُ and the eyes became dark with tears. When you, when you cry too much and your eyes just become overshadowed, there's bags of black around you. Right? That expression in Arabic is غَسَقَتْ غَسَقَتْ عَيْنُهُ غَسَقَتْ السَّمَاءِ When the sky becomes really dark with clouds, it's daytime but it feels like it's nighttime, and it really heavy rain is coming, that's called غَسَقَتْ السَّمَاءِ So these expressions, what is it telling you? Allah is referring to a time of night when it's completely and absolutely dark. But He goes a step further and says, إِذَا وَقَبَ For first of all, Allah is saying, He didn't say, مِنَ الْغَاسِقِ إِذَا وَقَبَ مِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ From the evil of the dark. In other words, Allah is letting us know that there are harms that are inherently present in the dark. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa would advise the Sahaba not to go out at night. In some narrations, he'd say, if you knew what I knew, you wouldn't go out at night. The shayateen meet in the oceans at night. They come out at night. And you know, in our society, when is it time to act like the devil? Right? It's Friday night. It's Saturday night. And you, if you don't believe that there are harms that come, up, come at night, watch the documentaries that have been done about the ERs across America. You know when they are filled? Friday and Saturday night. They're filled. Car accidents, people killing each other after a couple of beers drugs, alcohol, you name it. You name it. All of it, all that evil occurs when? At night. At night, subhanAllah. There's something evil, the potential of evil is far superior in the night. And of course, this is why it's more dangerous to travel at night. You wouldn't go out late at night. You wouldn't even let your kids go take out the garbage in the middle at 2 a.m. You say, no, do it in the morning. It's in, it's in human nature. You don't want to go out at night. And so we ask Allah, something that's inherent in human nature, we ask Allah, protect us from that dark evil. إِذَا waqaba. Now waqab, what's the, what's the word waqab? Because you know, in, in lugha, waqab is also a reference to darkness. So it's kind of like saying, from the evil of the dark night, when it gets dark. But it's already dark. So what's this getting dark over again? And why a different word for it? The word waqab, like waqab al dhalam So dark, that things become invisible. Waqab is actually used when something enters into, you know, there's a, there's a ditch inside a mountain at night, and something goes into that ditch, and you can't see it anymore. That's actually called waqaba. In other words, we're saying there are things hiding in the dark that we cannot see. This includes the shayateen. And I told you, a'udhu, isti'adha, i'adha in Arabic, a'udh, is you, or, or iyadh, is used for seeking protection from things you cannot see. So the ayah is using relevant language by saying, we're seeking refuge from the dark night, especially when it hides things inside it. When there are things lurking in the dark. 
that we cannot see. But specifically, one area that I wanted to bring to your attention is that ghasak is you or ghasik is used for the moon, for the moon. And you know, the moon, it's some, some interesting studies done recently, and this was done in, it used to be considered folk, folklore before, but now there are actual studies about it. You know what happens in the full moon in the oceans, right? There are, there's high tide, and there's this, the oceans become violent. Well, the human body also has fluids inside it. Do you, do you think the magnetic pull of the full moon has any effect on the human being? There are actual studies done on this, you know that? There are people that tend to become more violent. You know that whole genre of uh, mythical literature about werewolves and things like that? It's a, fa- it's a fantasized, you know, hyperbole of actual scientific phenomena where people experience psychological changes and aggravation during certain cycles of the moon. This is actually documented physics, like, like physiological behavior, subhanAllah. And that's actually where the English word lunatic comes from. You know lunatic, like crazy lunatic? It comes from lunar. Lunar, because this is this, this is even traditionally this was understood that at certain times there are certain behaviors that are that become acceptable, unacceptable at night time. So people would stay at home and things like that. Subhanallah. So you have this, you know, we're asking protection from these kinds of things that we do not have the ability to to infer for ourselves, and Allah Azza wa Jal teaches us about them. So now after min sharri By the way, I want a side comment about the guys, just the guys. We hang out at night a lot. We go out late a lot. We, we up until two, three in the morning a lot. You gotta quit it. You can't be reciting this and then hanging out late at night. It doesn't work. Because you're on the one hand you're saying, yeah man, it's a lot of time. And you go, you know, in the back of the restaurant at two a.m. and you're reciting Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq min sharri ma khalaq min sharri ghasiq idha when the full moon is out. <laughs> it's a little, little contradictory. So yeah, I know it hurts. It's close. I hang out at night sometimes too. But we have to curb that behavior. We have to get rid of it. Because it's, it's really not something acceptable. Plus, there are other harms of hanging out late at night. You know the kinds of people you'll see at restaurants at night. You know the kinds of people that are out at night. Plus, how, how wonderful your fajr is going to be. Even, if you, even if, if you do wake up, how awesome is it going to be? When you're standing there like tipping over even if you're not drunk. Right? So we have, there, there are harms in the night and we ask Allah's refuge for them. Allah has taught us to protect ourselves from those things. So we should take precaution ourselves. I know it hits close to home, but we should take these things into consideration. After all, this is guidance for ourselves. وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ This is specifically the context that I mentioned to you in the beginning. Allah called out, though نَفَّاثَات is a feminine plural. This is a feminine plural. And it's, you could say in modern Arabic, this would mean the women who blow on knots. And that's how many modern translations have actually translated it too. Nafathat, women who blow on knots. And they've attributed it to, oh, perhaps because you know how we, t- we said uh, his daughters were engaged in magic? And he got his daughters to blow on knots? So that's what it's referring to. But nafathat could be an adjective of nufus or anfus, people. The word nafs in Arabic is considered feminine. And its adjectives are considered feminine too. Now the word nafathat and also could be referred to groups. Because a lot of times this kind of sorcery and dark magic and things like that, these are like underground kinds of societies, they don't do it on their own, they, they get together and do their hamana hamana or whatever they do, right? But they do it in groups. And groups can be jam'u killah, jam'u salim also. So it could be groups of that, that you know, blow onto nas. The word nafathat actually means to blow with a little bit of spit coming out. To blow really hard out of your mouth, nafakha. Like, فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ نَفْخَةٌ وَاحِدًا Right? So that's نَفَخَ When roots are close in Arabic, the meanings are close. نَفَسَ This is ثَا ثَا, the three dots. But if you say نَفَسَ with a seen, that actually means breath also. تَنَفَسْ To take a breath. حَيَاتُكَ أَنْفَاسْ The poet says. Your life is just a set of breaths. You're gonna take in and out and eventually it'll be done. So نَفَسَ نَفَخَ And نَفَثَ here. نَفَثَت Nafathat, the ones who blow over and over and over again, engaging in the act of trying to to, to produce this magic fil uqad into knots. So this is uh, we, we talked about that in detail, so we'll come to the, the end part of it. Women Sharri Hasidin Ida Hasad. Here you have to appreciate something. You know there's the problem and there's the root of the problem. The first part of the surah dealt with problems. This last ayah takes you to the root of the problem. Why would someone do magic against someone? Why would someone cast a spell against someone? Why would someone want to harm someone else? What's the root of it? 
Jealousy. They want what they have. Jealousy. They don't want them to succeed. They want them to fail. Jealousy. So the root of it is mentioned at the end. وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ from, and from the evil of anyone who engages in the act of hasad. And hasad is of two kinds. There's a good kind that the Prophet described, we'll go to it at the end of today's dars. And there's of course the bad kind, the vast majority of hasad. You can't see someone getting popular. You can't see someone getting a promotion. You can't, you, you work at a gas station or you work as a janitor, and the guy, the other guy that works as a janitor with you, he got the metal broom and you only have the plastic one. And you're like, I'm gonna get this guy fired. It could be something pathetic like that. And it could be hasad. Right? It could be something silly, just absolutely silly. And you know where we have to be really careful of hasad? When we raise our children. We're really careful. Because kids get jealous of each other so easily. So easily. This is something we beg Allah to protect us from, and it's becoming so natural for our children to be jealous. Jealous. You know, you, you take your kids out for like uh, ice cream, you say, okay, we're only gonna get one ice cream. Everybody gets a little bit. No, her bite was bigger than mine. Uh, jealousy. These are small things. But if they're, if they're developing now, they're only gonna get worse later on. When it comes to matters of inheritance, when it comes to matters of this, that, and the other, you know, helping family members, this kind of thing, jealousy manifests. I know this is talking about the jealous against the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa which is why we also, it's important that we talk about the enemies of Islam that are jealous of Muslims. That's important. But closer to home, where does jealousy strike the Muslims? Inside the house. Within the families. Within the families. Within Muslims. I was so ashamed. Wallahi, I, it hurt me so much when I heard this. There was, a, there was a, uh, an orientation with the uh, FBI at one of the masajid. And they were talking about the kinds of calls they get about, you know, uh, nowadays whatever's going on and things like that. And they're trying to make better co- you know, communication with the Muslim community. And you know what they say? We get a lot of calls from Muslims about who's a terrorist. We get maybe a hundred calls in virtually every city about who's a terrorist. And I say, so, so what do you do with those calls? They say, well, the first thing we do is we check the one who called, is he in-laws with the other guy? Or is he in business with him? Or are they competing businesses across the street from each other? Because 99% of the time that's the case. Jealousy. Subhanallah. <laughs> this is the state of the Muslims. This is a real evil. And this evil can lead to some serious problems. Now there's one thing to feel jealousy inside. There's another to act it out, to do something about it. You know, if somebody could feel jealousy, ah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do anything about it. I feel it, but I'm not gonna do anything. Allah says, if you actually have hasad inside you, it is inevitable you will end up doing something bad. He didn't say, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِنْ hasada From the evil of the one who is jealous, if he acts it out, if he acts out his jealousy, he said, إِذَا hasada When he acts out his jealousy. What's the difference between if and when? If, it may or may not happen. What does when mean? It's gonna happen. If you have, if there's a person that has hasad, it'll manifest in one way or another. Whether it be the evil eye, whether it, you know, and al ainu haq, it occurred even in the Prophet's time, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the, this, this, the evil eye, the effect of it is even mentioned in the Quran. وَإِن يَكَادُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَيُزْلِقُونَكَ بِأَبْصَارِهِمْ لَمَّا سَمِعُوا الذِّكْرِ These people would stare the Prophet down almost as though they would make you fall and slip. The power of the evil eye. Subhanallah. You know, and then they'd say, وَيَقُولُونَ إِنَّهُ لَمَجْنُونَ So this, this is serious stuff, this, this jealousy business. And we have to seek refuge from it. Now, إِذَا حَسَدَ It seems like repetition. If you look at a common transition, from the evil of the, of the jealous one, when he is jealous. That's actually not what it is. When he acts out as jealous. Hasid is an ism, which means a dormant quality. Ism fa'il is a dormant quality. But when you say hasada, it's, an, it's a fi'l, it's an act, which is manifesting itself. It's actually taking place. So this is going from um, that which may exist in a dormant fashion to that which is actually manifest, it's actually taking place. So we're asking for the, the protection from the one who hides and has that jealousy and does things. And putting this surah in the context of the dark, we learn something else. The one who is jealous of you will never harm you in front of your face. They'll hide behind shadows and do it. They'll go behind your back and do it. They will do it in ways that you will not be able to, to tell by yourself. You, you won't be able to recognize it when it's happening. It's in the unseen from you. You don't know who's jealous from you. You don't know. There could be someone sitting next to you who's jealous of you, who means you harm. And you don't even know. 
again, this becomes a harm that is unseen to you, which is why a'udhu is perfect in the beginning. A harm that is unseen. Hasid is also a harm that is unseen. Now, I want to conclude inshaAllah ta'ala, hope, I don't think I'll be able to conclude before salah, but at least I want to give you um, one, uh, maybe I'll leave that parallel till the end, I'll, I'll, I'll just talk about two points of balagha, two points of eloquence that I found really beautiful and interesting. مِن شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ عَام When Allah said the evil of everything that He created, it is universal, it applies to everything. But then, فَمَا مَعْنَ الْإِسْتِعَاذَ بَعْدَهُ مِنَ الْغَاسِقِ وَالنَّفَّاثَاتِ وَالْحَاسِدِ Then what's the point of mentioning these things? You know, the darkness of the night, the ones who blow on knots, the one who is jealous. Isn't this all part of مِن شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ if you say min sharri ma khalaq, it includes all of these things. So what's the point of mentioning all of these? فَالْجَوَاب تَنْبِيهًا عَلَىٰ أَنَّ هَذِهِ الشُّرُورَ أَعْضَمُ أَنْوَاعِ الشَّرِّ This is Allah making us alert that these specific categories are of evil are the greatest ones. So you say to Allah Azza wa Jal, I want protection from all kinds of harm, especially the three biggies. The three big ones, which are the night, the potential harms that come from the night, the potential harm of people doing sorcery against you, and the harm of the one who means you harm by because of their jealousy, what the, the hatred they have inside of their heart. These three are the big ones. So you have to ask Allah Azza wa to protect you from them. There's a great scholar in Islamic history, actually I'll, I'll tell you that about him at the end, after salah inshallah. I'll tell you about uh, Shaykh Muhammad Qasim Nanudhwi, one of the founders of Deoband, had a remarkable commentary on this surah, but I'll share with you the parable, the parable he gave to explain to his students what this surah means. But I'll, I'll conclude with this one more comment on the language of the surah. لِمَا عَرَّفَ بَعْضَ الْمُسْتَعَادْ مِنْ وَنَكَّرَ بَعْضَهُ How come Allah put alif lam al on some of the things that we're supposed to seek refuge from, and He didn't put on the others? For example, النَّفَّاثَات النَّفَّاثَات But مِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ There's no al Similarly, وَمِن شَرِّ الْحَاسِدِ or حَاسِدٍ حَاسِدٍ So, النَّفَاثَاتِ has al, but everything else is left open. So what's the purpose of that? Now, let's see. عَرَّفَ النَّفَّاثَاتِ لِأَنَّ كُلَّ نَفَّاثَ شَرِيرًا First of all, he made نَفَّاثَاتِ The ones who blow on knots, he made them proper because every single one of them is evil. There's no exception. If somebody's blowing on knots, they don't mean well. <laughs> that can't be. وَنَكَّرَ غَاسِقًا لِأَنَّهُ لَيْسَ كُلَّ غَاسِقٍ شَرِيرًا And he made غَاسِق general because not every dark night is necessarily evil. They can be evil in a dark night, but dark night in and of itself is not necessarily evil. وَأَيْضًا لَيْسَ كُلَّ حَاسِدٍ شَرِيرٍ And similarly, yes, he may try to act out his evil, but he may not actually be able to harm someone. So the one who is jealous may or may not actually end up harming someone. They may or may not be able to do so. But nafathat are definitely going to try to do so. That's one difference between them. The second difference is in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, which specific problem did this surah deal with? Did it deal with the darkness? The darkness of the night? The jealous? Or did it deal with the sorcerer? Of these three, which specific problem is the surah answering? The sorcerer. That is given. It's, it's mu'arraf billam. Alif Lam is put on it. It deals with that particular problem. Additionally, it will deal with any problem they may, that may occur in the darkness of the night, and may deal with anyone who is jealous after that, so it left that door open. And it made it universal. SubhanAllah. So there's this difference between the uh, Nakira and the Ma'rafah. The time for Salah is approaching, so we'll take a break at this point, and we'll conclude this dars after the Sunnah prayers, with the, the remarkable commentary of Shaykh Nanodawi. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim wa salamu alaykum.